welcome back to my channel. This is Psychic Medium Raymond Guzman, and today I'm going to be doing a celebrity psychic reading on um, Princess Diana. This has been highly requested by a lot of my viewers, and I really feel very connected to Princess Diana for some reason, so um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to do this um, celebrity mediumship psychic reading on her. So I'm going to just go ahead and start channeling um, as her soul is stepping forward and as I'm receiving information about her life and her passing. And just looking at Princess Diana, you can just tell her soul was a pure soul. The eyes don't lie. The, the, the eyes are the windows to the soul. If you look deeply into her eyes, you see nothing but love. Um, just an overall princess, uh, an, an earth angel. She was an earth angel here on earth. And she was also an indigo. I feel like her purpose here was to change a lot of the dichotomy in the royal family and also, you know, the viewpoints of how people perceive the royals to be. Um, her purpose was very much served while she was here in the physical world. So she did impact and leave a legacy behind uh, that impacted not just London, not just the UK, uh, but all of Europe, all over the world, Australia, the United States, everybody felt and mourned her loss. And it was such a tragic situation. But who really was Princess Diana? And what did she have to endure during her time um, with Prince Charles? That's the biggest question here. So what I get is that Diana, Princess Diana was a, a you know, someone who, when she was growing up, she was a, such a bright, vibrant soul. She loved music. She loved dance. She was just someone who was very creative and passionate about everything. But when she met uh, Prince Charles and they they got married. I feel like there was a lot of resistance within the royal family itself coming from the queen. Uh, I feel like the queen sort of, you know, accepted Diana, but didn't like that she was such a free spirit and one not to be tamed. And she knew that. Uh, and I also feel like, you know, many times, you know, in the beginning when she first met Prince Charles, there was a lot of obstacles put on their path so that they would not get married. Um, and this would be coming from the fa the royal family. I feel like they didn't fully embrace Diana to the point where she was accepted with open arms. When we look back at their wedding and we see, you know, this beautiful uh, photographs and how, you know, beautiful and they looked so happy together. You have to understand that was, you know, the public appearance, what they had to do or show to the public because they are royals. But behind the scenes, there was so much um, emotion, so much anguish, mental abuse, uh, verbal abuse that I feel like Diana endured, Princess Diana, uh, as well as other, you know, just nasty behaviors that would have been exhibited towards her, almost like bullying from uh, a, what I'm receiving from her soul. So it wasn't all, you know, peaches and cream. It wasn't all, you know, um, beautiful and you know, fairy tale type of wedding when she had that, and and their marriage wasn't a fairy tale marriage. Early on, Princess Diana learned that Prince Charles was having affairs outside of the marriage, but she kept it quiet and she kept it to herself because you know she was very ladylike, and you know she didn't want to you know cause any problems in the royal family or disturbances. So she kept her peace and she kept very quiet. But it it's chipped away at her soul knowing that there was no faithfulness in the marriage. And I feel like also that there was other things that she discovered about, you know, Prince Charles uh, and the royal family. These would have been family secrets, things that she would have, um, you know, picked up on and not agreed upon. I feel like they tried to, they tried to mold her uh, and, con and kind of, you know, make her into this um, persona that she was, that she didn't want to be. Um, she had no problem being, you know, a princess. Uh, and taking that royal responsibility, but she didn't want to be confined to the castle, or not the castle, but the living, you know, the palace, the the area that they would have been living in, that home, and that, you know, the community. She wanted to branch out and go and travel and meet, you know, people, and you basically use her platform to make changes in the world. And I feel like this is where a lot of women prior to her in the royal family would have not stepped out you know, as much as Princess Diana did. And they feared that, you know, if she was to use her public platform and step out, would she expose them? Would she, you know, come out and say things 
um, that would embarrass them later on or make them feel, but she handled everything with elegance and grace. Um, she became, in, a, in her very short time, you know, here on earth, a role model to men and women and children all over the world. She um, was a humanitarian. She contributed a lot to cha uh, charities in Africa and helped a lot of people all over the world. She did what a lot of other others in the royals, females in the royal family would have never done or didn't have the, um, you know, the guts, so to speak, to step out and do that because of fear. Um, you know, and she doesn't regret anything that she ever did when she was here in the physical world. But, um, you know, it was all about money for the royal family and continue to stream money from, you know, people and also have control over Diana. They wanted to control her. That was the main thing. And she wasn't going to allow it. Her free spirit, you know, and she was protected by angels as well, even though, you know, how she passed. And I'll get into that. Um, but she was very much guided by a higher power. I feel like Diana was not just an indigo and was going to change the world and how people see the royals, um, but also, you know, empowering women and children and men all over the world through her, you know, humanitarian efforts and through her vision and through different aspects that she made. But I also feel like she was very intuitive, like I said. And um, I want to say she was a clairvoyant. She actually had abilities to see things, uh, see outcomes. And she knew more or less that her marriage with Prince Charles uh, within the first five years, that it wasn't going to last. It wasn't going to be something that was going to be pleasant. And I feel like she sacrificed her soul in so many ways, not necessarily like something evil sacrifice. Because when people hear that, they're going to just misinterpret what I'm saying. What I'm referring to is I feel like she sacrificed her happiness, which is her soul, in a lot of ways to make Prince Charles happy and to make the royals happy. But she wasn't ultimately happy in that environment in that setting when she was away from the royals from the palace and from all of these um these you know people in the royal family she felt freedom she felt like she could be herself and she didn't have to you know put on a facade because she didn't like to live in her in she didn't like to live in a in a way where she wasn't being authentic or or honest she was a very open soul very open book very honest uh, and just a sweet loving caring generous person and she had a funny side but I feel like the most most of that you know kind of went away and she lost herself in this marriage and in this union and she did have two beautiful children which is uh, Prince William and Prince uh, Harry but you know she just didn't get to to you know celebrate and live her life out like she should have it was cut short um, so let's let me get into the next slide here uh, this is oops get back to the next slide well this is the um, princess diana and dodi fayed okay so this is the uh the actual slide that i wanted to get into um, as you can see here, this is um, the guy that supposedly she was, you know, dating uh, or seeing. And I feel like he was actually a very good soul for her. I feel like he had good intentions. Um, he saw her beauty and she, you know, Princess Diana, the reason that she would have had this affair was because she had had enough. She had had enough of the lies and, you know, everybody when they, you know, after her death and, you know, prior to her death, there was a lot of people speculating that, you know, her relationship with Dodie, that she was unfaithful to Prince Charles. And but it was the other way around. People got it all twisted. You know, Prince Charles was the one that was having affairs prior to the marriage ending um, you know, or the marriage, you know, not being good. And um, this is what caused Princess Diana to seek love outside of the marriage. And I feel like Dodie saw her and saw her beauty and honored every piece of her and loved her unconditionally but i feel like their union was not well received at all by the royal family and there was sort of like a revenge factor um tabloids were paid off by people in the royal family which i think this is something that may have not ever been discussed or people may have speculated that this had happened but what i get from diana's soul is that there was people uh, hired by the british family to write scathing 
uh, reviews and, and um, stories about her relationship with Dodi Fayed. Uh, but ultimately, their whole relationship was shrouded in a cloud of darkness, meaning I do not feel like her passing was just from a car accident that was, you know, just random because paparazzi was chasing them and whatnot through a tunnel. I get that there was foul play. Yes, there was foul play behind this. And I feel like these people, whoever were, were chasing them, were definitely hired. Hired by somebody close who Diana would have spent a lot of her, her years with. And that's what I'm going to say. And I know it's something that's very sad for, to, for me to even to, to come out and say that, but that's what I get. These people were were hired. It wasn't just paparazzi randomly going, you know, and they wanted to eliminate Diana any way possible. And this was all premeditated, all planned out. They knew exactly where she was going to be, where the car and the driver was going to be. I actually feel like the driver was also paid. It's so, it's like a plot twist. I feel like the driver that was driving the vehicle that she was in was actually paid. I don't know uh, who the driver was. Uh, I was a uh, young when I remember I was like, um, I think I was a freshman in high school when this happened in 1997. But yeah, I feel like whoever was driving the vehicle, there was, it, it was just a weird situation. But I definitely get that this was foul play. I don't get that she would have passed from, you know, um, you know, just a random accident that would have happened. This was all premeditated. They wanted her out because they didn't like the fact that she had stepped outside of the royal family and now was dating uh, Dodi Fayette, who which was the son of a billionaire. And there was just so much, um, you know, that they would have not appreciated and they wouldn't have liked the fact that she she did this. So her soul's at peace. Um, and I get that she is definitely watching over Prince Harry and Prince uh, Charles. I'm not Prince Charles, but Prince William. Um, you know, she's, is watching over them, her, her sons and her grandchildren, and she's very uh, proud of them. And she's very, you know, happy about their whole, uh, life and, and everything that, that is going on. I, I do feel like she would have had some kind of conversation. It would have been like arguments, uh, a few weeks before, you know, her passing with Prince Charles and, um, and, you know, that you know, calling him out basically on his, you know, on his uh, lies and things that were going on. But I feel like, you know, she was threatened before, you know, this whole relationship. And she was told by the royal family, someone in the royal family, I believe this was a female, to stop seeing Dodie Fayette, that th this would not end up well for her, that this wasn't looking good for the royal family. It was very scandalous to them. They didn't like the fact that she was, you know, claiming her power back. And she was ultimately more happy than she had ever been with Prince Charles when she was with Dodie. And that's what I'm getting. A lot of people try to speculate and say that, you know, Dodie was taking advantage of Princess Diana. But ultimately, that's a lie. I feel like she was really happy with him. There was just a lot of joy, a lot of good things that, that were coming from this. And weird enough, I don't know if she was able at that time to get pregnant. I don't know. But what I get from her soul is like there's a possibility that she could have been pregnant from Dodie Fayed. I know that sounds way out there, but that's kind of like what I'm receiving is that there would have been like a pregnancy or some speculation that she was expecting a child from him. And this was another thing that would have been a big scandal that um, they did, the, you know, the royal family found out somehow either through the doctor that she would have gone to or through, you know, word of mouth of a friend, but they found out that she would have been pregnant. And I feel like this was why they wanted to eliminate her. Um, so yes, it was foul play. Uh, I do get that, you know, a lot of these people that contributed to her passing now um, are not in good health um, and there is karma to pay and they are paying, you know, even though they are alive still and um, they are, in, you know, in uh, royal positions that their life is not uh, the way that you know they think that the public perceives it to be there's a lot of drama that's associated in the royal family a lot of unhappiness I feel like the children also at a certain level her sons they are kind of 
you know, the more or less they know or they feel or intuitively feel like their father is responsible or that their um, the royal family is responsible for their passing. They were very young you know, uh, an age when their mom passed. But the fact is, I feel like now that they're older and they reflect on it, you know, they were told a lot of lies back then, things that they were not told. Um, they've done their own research that have come to the surface about their mother's passing. And um, I, I just get that there was a lot of evil behind uh, all of this. You know, it, like I said, their Princess Diana's relationship with Dodi Fayed was shrouded in a cloud of darkness there was no chance on this earth that it would have s survived if you know they would have continued down this path and if what i'm getting from princess diana's soul is correct that she would have you know uh, been pregnant um yeah this this would have not turned out good they would have still attempted to do something to take her out and i feel like in her many ways that's why her soul accomplished a lot on the short time that she was here on earth and she had such a great impact because the people out of all the princesses and royal family she was the one that people could relate to the one that people could see themselves you know because she was so relatable and she was someone who kind of you know just took her position to the the next level so she was in many ways uh very relatable someone who was very loved by the public and people took it to heart and mourned her and still mourn her and still um see her you know she's going to be an icon she's she's always going to be a you know someone who is well respected and a prominent figure in the history books uh because her soul was so pure and so beautiful and she just didn't get to live out her life the way that you know she would have liked to uh it was cut short you know but like i said she has no regrets she loves her children she's going to always watch over them and her their, and her grandchildren and she's um supporting them from the other side um i do feel like eventually you know she is going to reincarnate but it probably won't be uh right now it'll be way far out but as far as this is concerned i feel like her and Dodie are definitely together uh, in the spiritual realm and that Dodi was actually her soulmate. Uh, that's something I think a lot of people don't really realize that Dodi was her soulmate. Prince Charles was not her soulmate. He was not even a twin flame. He was, I feel like this was an arrangement and it, she was forced to marry Prince Charles in many ways. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I feel like there was this forcing, you know, factor that she was forced to marriage, to marry into the royal family. It wasn't something where she wanted to just, you know, openly just have a relationship with the royal family. And when she recovered a lot of her inner strength and her courage to get away from that, that's when, you know, the trouble began with her. Um, and that, you know, all this shroud of darkness surrounded her and her life and her relationship but you know to a certain point they couldn't touch her because she was such a bright soul that she would you know um kind of like deflect a lot of that negative energy but at the same time there's been a lot of lies cover-ups and facades that have been put on on interviews by people key people in the royal family um, who really know the truth behind what happened to princess diana but are very good actors and actresses about this and would not you know come out and definitely say anything but um yeah i do feel like all of this was premeditated it was foul play this was not a random accident you know it was all staged and ready to not stage but it was all premeditated and ready to they knew the outcome more or less of what was going to happen so um this is what i am receiving this is my mediumship psychic reading for princess diana uh, blessings and love and light to everyone that is listening. Thank you for always being here on my channel. If you did like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you would like to set up a private reading with me, you can go to my website. That's www.raymondguzman.net forward slash shop. I also will say this, that whatever you see and read in the media, don't believe it. When you listen to my um to my uh you know video of my mediumship reading you're going to probably start comparing so a lot of people compare you know what they know what they think they know from you know what they saw in the media or whatnot but a lot of that is in the media is all lies propaganda that have been published by you know people in the royal family over years and people that just want to sell tabloids so don't try to compare my reading to what you know is being 
what was put out in the media many years ago because a lot of it are, are lies a lot there's some truth as far as like facts like who princess diana was with who she married and who she was seen but there's a lot of speculation a lot of you know lies that they have put in the media so um ultimately you know this is what i'm seeing and hearing i want to thank you again have an amazing day